Okay, we're here in VexCode uh, EXP, and we're going to be working on Ve Vex EXP um, brain here. So uh, this video is going to focus on using the console printout and like seeing data that your program would be using. So we have a we have our brain connected to the computer with USB. Uh, we've checked to make sure that it's connected here. Um, we remember <laughs> just to review. Uh, we've already selected our program slot, so we have a one here. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and just save our, uh, so we're going to click save as. And I already typed in this before console example. Um, <clears throat> so notice that we've named our program accordingly and saved it. And just to review that we know that, uh, to, that download and run are different, right? So download puts the program into slot one on the program brain and run executes the program in slot one. So, uh, so just remember that when you change your program, you have to click download first and then run. Clicking run only will not run your new code. All right, so, uh, so we're going to take a look. Uh, we're gonna stick with using blocks on this one, even though we are, this, uh, these videos will focus on transitioning into Python. Um, but the blocks interface is really great uh, when combined with the Python code viewer. So if you click on the code viewer and notice here that this is the output of Python code. Um, sometimes the um, the VEX, uh, the VEX um, uh, documentation is really lacking. Uh, so really, I would suggest uh, if you're trying to figure things out, uh, I would suggest doing things with the blocks and then seeing how it is producing uh, Python code and then using, you know, snippets of that code in your own Python programs. That's that's my suggestion. Um, you can wade into their documentation, um, but, uh, but some things seem to be fairly undocumented at this point. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so we're going to be focusing on this video on, uh, on the console, uh, which is over here. So this is the console. Um, and basically the console is a way for us to, uh, to have feedback from the brain. And we have a couple options with that. So if we, if we go down here on the left-hand side, notice that we have our print area right here. If we keep scrolling down, notice that, uh, as we move down, this will highlight. Uh, so it's just one giant menu separated into sections and the section headings are on the left with these colored dots. And then the, the blocks are, are colored, uh, uh, um, are colored like the dots. So, uh, okay. So, <clears throat> so notice we scroll down here. We can see there's a lot, a lot of different um, uh, uh, dots. And I'm looking for print vex code to brain. So, <clears throat> so here we have print vex code to brain. Uh, there's a selection here, and so if we print it to brain, it's going to print on the uh, on the uh, on the screen of the uh, brain itself. Uh, we need to change that to console in our case. So in this, so here we have a situation where we're gonna be running our code on, an, on, a, on a brain that is attached to the computer. The, the code is gonna run on the brain and then it's gonna send data back to the computer. And by using this print, uh, print you know, some uh, value into the console, we can then see right in our programming environment here what is happening on the brain. Okay, so it's very useful. Both are very useful. So so if say we have a mobile robot like like the one we have here, this claw bot, we can see uh, you know, we can put it up on blocks like we have it here, and we can see kind of some some data coming off it. Now uh, for a mobile robot, it might be more uh, beneficial for us to also see these things on the brain. So you can change all the code in this video just from console to brain and you can see these things print out on the brain. Okay, it has another option here, and, and that says, and set cursor, cursor to next row, and we'll kind of get into that in just a second. So, so let's say we want to just, just the vanilla code here, when started, print vex code to console. So we can go ahead and click uh, run, or sorry, uh, download and run. And it has failed to download, so we're going to do a little troubleshooting on the video. If I go ahead and disconnect, reconnect, and let's see if that works. So I just disconnected the USB and then reconnected. 
and it downloaded just fine that time. Uh, and uh, now we're going to go ahead and click run. Or sorry, I'm going to click over to the console and then click run. And let's try that one more time. Download the brain. Okay, we are in fact going to go ahead and power cycle the uh, the uh, um, uh, brain itself. Uh, this is some valuable troubleshooting here. Um, notice that. Uh, <laughs> notice that. <laughs> There are a lot of glitches, uh, just to say the least. So we have print vex code to console here. Uh, let's try it one more time. We're going to download that and then click run again. Oh, there we have it. And notice <laughs> and set cursor to next row. That got it for us. So. So apparently if we have just one line of code, we need that set cursor to next row. Maybe, you know, for some reason the, the display here is not working correctly. There are a lot of glitches like this when programming with XEXP, and it's best just to learn about them. You know, this is all programming environments. Any complex system generally, unfortunately, has a lot of uh, kind of glitches like this. So, okay, so uh, so we have this print VEX code on console and set cursor to next row. Uh, notice that it only prints it once, right? So only prints it once. Well, let's say that we want to print something not just VEX code, right? Let's say that we want to do something like uh, we want to we want to have some sensing, right? So we want to see uh, we want to see uh, the heading and degrees. So this brain inertial right here. So notice we have this brain. Uh, we have an inertial sensor built into the EXP brain. Uh, and let's say that instead of the VEX code, we want to see the heading and degrees. Okay, so we can just drop this right into the uh, right into the um, uh, print brain inertial heading and degrees. Right, it's built in on console and set cursor to next row. Okay, all right. So now we have this uh, this bit of data uh, printing into the console. So now what's happening is is the inertial sensor in the brain is sensing the heading. It's sending it back through the USB and then back into our coding environment and then should be printing into our console. So let's see if that works here. All right, so we downloaded the robot and then we click run and we have a zero. Okay, so zero heading, which makes sense because of the fact that it resets every time. So, right, so if I have a heading, if I were to set the, even if I move the robot, let's say I move the robot a bit like this uh, and then I were to run it again, heading also zero, right? Okay, well, what if I wanted to say, what if, so that's not really going to help be helpful for us, right? So if, uh, if we go ahead and we um, want to you know, have it constantly updating, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to put this in a loop. Okay? So this might be the first time you use a loop. A loop is exactly what it sounds. It's a loop. So, so basically what happens is that just it, uh, when the code gets to this loop, it runs the, the, code, the code block inside of the loop, and then because it's a forever loop, it just keeps running. Now let's take a look at the Python code associated with this. And basically what we have here, I wish we could move this over, but, uh, but we cannot. So, uh, so basically we have a def, uh, we have a, you know, we declare a couple variables up here. Um, in Python, we don't have to uh, declare the type of the variables. We have these, uh, it actually gets set automatically. So by setting this uh, to a zero, uh, I believe it gets set to an integer and then it then gets changed automatically when necessary. Uh, so we have... Uh, death when started one. So this is uh, this is the um, this is the name of the function that is called when the program is started. Uh, and then notice that this is the call to that function. So on line eleven, uh, we call this when started. Okay, it's just written here in on line eleven. So when the uh, execution gets to line eleven, uh, execution program gets to line eleven, it runs that. We declare a few global variables here, and then we have this while true. That's our forever loop. Okay, so while uh, while means hey, uh, repeat the code block that's under while. Notice that in Python we define code blocks not with curly braces uh, like we would in C plus plus. So C plus plus here. Notice that we have curly braces uh, right here that defines our code block. Uh, that's like in C plus plus C JavaScript. In Python we use indentation, right? So 
So inside our function, this is the code block inside of def, which is our function, right? That's how we define a function. And then we have our code block under while, which is on line seven and eight, and that's also indented here. Okay, so we have while true, uh, and the true is the condition, and so it's just gonna go ahead and run like this. Now the print, that is our printing to the console. Okay, so this, uh, we'll take a look more in depth later on. We just just know that this is the line on eight, line eight that is printing out to the console. And then we have wait five milliseconds. So why wait five milliseconds? Well, the reason for that is when you're running a loop, if you just run a loop with no wait time in between, uh, sometimes that can cause problems for the computer or cause problems for the processor uh, because it's trying to you know uh, run, run code as fast as it possibly can. So putting some wait time in there, I believe takes some load off of the processor. That's, that's my opinion. So, okay. Uh, all right, so here, that's our Python code. Uh, so we now have it in a loop. Let's go ahead and download and run it. All right, and we're gonna go back over to our console. We go ahead and click run. And now we have this, notice how it, it runs all the way down here. And we have this last line that is constantly giving us the heading and then giving us a new line. So now when we go ahead and we turn our robot, so now if I turn my robot, remember that heading is goes from zero to 360 uh, degrees, right? So this, so turning to the right goes, you know, we count up to 360. If we turn to the left, we go down from 360, uh, counting down. Okay, so this will work. This this strategy will work uh, for for any kind of data. So so basically, anything that I can sense on the brain, I can put back into the console uh, with using this print command, or I can print it out to the brain. Uh, so so sometimes it's useful. Uh, so now we're going to get into some like different strategies. So. So basically just remember that print, and then we have some value. This value can be from a sensor. It could be heading, anything that comes back in uh, as a value. So it could be a number, uh, <clears throat> but sometimes it's nice to, to be able to see multiple values on a single line. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. And this will be kind of the last thing we do uh, for our print console uh, uh, lesson here. All right, so let's say we wanna go ahead, right click duplicate, and we bring this uh, print command up uh, and we go ahead and get rid of that uh, value. And we don't want to set the next row. And we just go ahead, let's say that we want to do headings and we're going to do H to remind us that it's heading, H colon. And let's go ahead and drag that into our forever loop. And then we're going to go download and run. So notice now what we have is we, we have, it's printing H uh, colon uh, to show us the heading is 360. We, we removed the new line command. So basically it's printing all on the same line, okay? All right, so let's say now, uh, uh, let's say now that we wanna have another, uh, whoops, we wanna have another uh, uh, something printing to the console, another piece of information, say we attached a sensor, something like that. Uh, let's say that we uh, go ahead and Let's say we want to do our brain orientation of role. Okay, so so we're going to go ahead brain orientation on role. <clears throat> so role basically is our uh, rotating around the y axis. It's when the you know say if one wheel went up on our our uh, clawbot here, role would become something other than what it was at the start. And we want to go ahead. We don't want to see an H here. All right, we want to see an R. Uh, and we're just going to kind of make a mistake here and just go ahead and and do it as is. Right. So we have H colon in the console, no line break, and then we have the heading in degrees and a line break, and then we have R in the console, R colon in the console, no line break, and then uh, orientation rule and line break. So let's go ahead and download that to the robot and click run. Okay, so notice this isn't super readable, right? So if I, if I go ahead and I start to actually get some data here and I start to roll this around, that is not gonna be helpful, right? So, so basically what we have here is we have just, you know, uninterpretable data flying up the screen at us and it's just not going to help us a lot. So, so basically what we need to do is we need to get kind of creative on our formatting here. And by doing that, let's go ahead and remove the, remove the new line uh, after our heading degree, heading data. And then we're going to add a couple of spaces before I just hit the, the space key three times there. Uh, and and now we have it a little bit more uh, manageable. So, so just those two things, remove the, rem we remove the line break after our first piece of data, and then we added a space separating the two pieces of data.
Okay, so we're going to download and run. Okay, now it's much more manageable. So we have a heading and our R. And now as we go ahead and things change, we can we can definitely see as it flies at the screen, we can see the change in the values and it's easily readable for the, us, even though it is kind of, you know, it blinks a little bit and it run, kind of runs away. But, but uh, and then, uh, so that's our first kind of step here. And then our second thing we're going to do is we're going to add weights. So, you know, uh, it'll be, you know, this, these lines of code are going, you know, I'm not sure, hundredth of a second, thousandth of a second. I'm not sure what it is. But do we really need the data every thousandth of a second? Probably not, right? We can add a wait for one second here at the end. So on each loop, it's going to print out that data, then wait a second, and then go back up and, and run the loop again. So let's go ahead and download that, and that will be our last thing. Uh, we'll just take a quick look at the Python code in just a second, and then we'll uh, and, and we'll call it a wrap on this uh, uh, lesson here. So okay, so we go ahead and click run, and now instead of you know this data flying up the screen at us, we have kind of a more manageable uh, uh, set of data that we can see. Um, and remember, if we wanted to you know say this is you know this works great if it's at our desk or you know at a at a at a workstation. But uh, but if it's on a mobile robot, maybe we want to take this uh, whole block of code and put it on the brain instead. Okay, let's take a look quickly at the uh, Python output of this. Uh, so basically, it's just a lot of print commands, right? So so uh, so we could we you know we can copy and paste this into a different editor um, so that we could see it. Um, uh, but this is basically it. So we just print uh, end equals zero, end equals zero. Um, if we go ahead and do a next row, so notice that uh, notice that in in Python, if we want to have a line break, we don't do anything. We just leave it as plain print and then some string inside of a uh, uh, quotes. Uh, if we wanted to have no line break, notice we add a comma and then add a second. A parameter, and that's end, e end equals, and then basically we have a, an empty string. We have two quotes with nothing in between them. Uh, I believe this just takes the place of a line break character, um, so uh, which I would need to see at the end of the line here. <laughs> okay, uh, so then we have our you know wait one second, and then we have our standard wait, wait five m sec. Okay, so that is using the console to see data. It is invaluable. You you really um, you really do need to do this. Um, it you know this and comments in your code are going to make your life a lot easier as a programmer. Uh, and this seeing data come back off of the um, off of the brain is absolutely necessary, especially as you start to try to use uh, sensor data inside of if statements. You really need to know what the ranges are for those sensors, and this is how you do it. This is the this is kind of the easiest way to do it. Now, is this the like the professional way to do it? No, it is not. Okay, so so uh, these print statements, the console are kind of like for uh, you know um, are great in this environment. In other environments, you'd want to set watch variables and breakpoints and things like that. Uh, but you'll get to that later on. So for now, console is great. Uh, so best of luck.